So I moved up a little bit. I just feel so far away from you guys. These next two months are gonna be me adjusting my camera and complaining about the way it looks when I watch it back. So that's exciting. <laughs> What's up guys? Today I'm doing my last conspiracy theory video and it's queen related. I hope this one is juicy enough. I really had a hard time finding information for this one, but I think this is a really interesting situation that happened. It mainly has to do with Freddie rather than the whole group, but it's about Freddie, Mary, and Jim, and basically their relationships with each other. Totally forgot my notepad. You guys know it's not a conspiracy theory without this little dude. Let's begin. So I feel like, yes. Sure. I can't pass up some coffee. That Dunkin', that iced coffee with some cream, medium. Wow. Hallelujah. Oh my gosh, I don't have my little trick-or-treat pin on. Give me five seconds. Now we're cooking with peanut oil. Stop being silly, Ashley. I know you just had caffeine, but let's get it together. Last video, let's make it spooky. Okay. I'd say for a long time, the Queen fandom was like very chill, very relaxed. And then Bohemian Rhapsody, the movie started being made and that was just a whole thing. Some people loved it, some people hated it. And some people were just kind of indifferent. I was kind of indifferent in the beginning. I was like excited, but at the same time, I understood why people were kind of frustrated with certain things about the movie. But it's not just the Bo Rap movie that has kind of divided the fandom. It also is the relationship that Freddie had with his two biggest partners, Mary Austin and Jim Hutton. So some of the fandom really loves Jim. They think he's great. They feel like, you know, he was there for Freddie in Freddie's last few years. And then some people feel like Jim was using Freddie for money. And when Jim wrote the book Mercury and Me, which was about him and Freddie's relationship, some people felt like he was exposing Freddie's personal life way too much and overstepping boundaries. And then you have Mary, which some people love and adore because Mary has been there since the very beginning of Freddie's career before Queen was even Queen. She was there with him and she loved him. When Freddie came out and said he liked men, Mary was very accepting of it and still continued to be Freddie's friend and stick with him even though she was heartbroken. And then some people feel that she was extremely selfish when Jim came into Freddie's life, saying that she just did not care for Jim that she was very protective of Freddie, probably overprotective, and she just made a huge to-do about Freddie and Jim's relationship that some people feel wasn't needed. I feel like it's a he said, she said kind of situation. Although some things have been proven true that they actually didn't happen, there are many things that Mary says Jim did that might have not happened, or Jim said Mary did that might have not happened. I really just don't know who or what to trust. Like if Freddie was here, I'd probably believe him. It's just a lot of gossip really, rather than straight facts, which is why it was kind of hard to do this video. So as you guys know, Mary had been with Freddie before Queen and still stuck around after Freddie came out. They were made friends and eventually she married Pierce Cameron and had two sons. Then we have Jim who met Freddie at a gay nightclub called Heaven and eventually he moved in with Freddie at Freddie's home, Garden Lodge until Freddie passed away. That's a whole incident. So I feel like, you know, some tea, yes. I guess. I feel like it definitely began when Freddie and Mary didn't work out anymore as a couple. And even though Mary was very respectful about when Freddie came out and still continued to support him, I really do feel like Mary was there for Freddie because she was there before the fame and success. So I don't believe that she was just there for the money. I do feel though that because of what happened between her and Freddie's actual relationship, things kind of were strained, which is understandable. She definitely got her her feelings hurt. I don't think that she was selfish to be upset about this. Let's focus on Jim for just a second. So Jim released a book called Mercury and Me, which I've actually read. I really enjoyed the book, but I will say there were definitely some moments that even though I enjoyed reading them, I did feel a little guilty just because it is so personal. There were a lot of cute moments that he shared about Freddie, but there were also some very intimate and also very sad moments he shared about Freddie, and this is one of them. I was crying for the first time since he had told me of his condition, Freddie brought up the subject of his death. He asked me a very odd question, the gist of it being, what are you going to do when I die? I don't know, I said, still crying. I can't handle it all. Well, how do you think I feel, he replied. 
I looked over and Freddie was crying too. He cuddled up to me and we cried quietly together, hugging each other tighter for some kind of reassurance. A few minutes later, I got up to go to the bathroom and did a very odd thing. I shaved my mustache. When I returned to the bed, Freddie looked astonished. He'd never seen me without my mustache. He knew I loved the mustache so much, I thought I'd never shave it off. It was a sort of token sacrifice to show him how sorry I was that he was having a bad time. We cuddled up in bed and soon fell asleep." So yeah, that's pretty intense, and even though things like that, I enjoy reading it. I love to, you know, see inside what Freddy's life was like behind closed doors. It still did make me feel a little guilty. The biggest thing that was talked about in Jim's book that really raised eyebrows was when he said that Mary essentially kicked him out of Garden Lodge after Freddy passed away. Not only did she kick him out, but apparently she also got rid of all of Freddy's cats. I am aware that Freddy left Garden Lodge to Mary, so I understand if she wanted the house, but in Jim's book he claimed that it was very sudden and unexpected and was done in a very nasty manner. I don't know, to me it doesn't seem like Jim was a bad influence on Freddy's life. I really do feel like Jim was trying to be there, and I don't know if Mary was still, you know, upset that her and Freddie didn't work out after all those years and it was just tumbling down on her or what it was. I totally forgot to mention this, but going back to Jim and sharing too much information, I did find another quote in his book that actually really surprised me. I always talk about Freddie's private life and how he wanted things to kind of be hush-hush and not all of his business to be out in the open, but in Jim's book he actually did mention this. Freddie grabbed and hugged me. Such open affection embarrassed me dreadfully. That day, the British tabloid press missed a fabulous photograph to throw over their front pages, but Freddie didn't care who saw him throw his arms around me. It just seems to me, and this has happened before, there's an interview where Freddie says he's gay as a daffodil, but I feel like Freddie loves to play with the media because he hates the media. Most people do. They, you know, invade his privacy, and I feel like it gets to a point where it's almost laughable. You just want to say a big, you know, screw you, just because you're kind of over it. You're kind of over feeling like you have to hide hide everything. Jim even went on to do interviews talking about Freddie as well and their relationship. He actually died in your arms. He actually died. Not, I, I won't say actually in my arms, but yes, I was there when he died. Honestly, like, I admire his bravery, especially during that time. It's just Jim and Mary, I, I see the good and the bad in both, but I will say if the whole Garden Lodge situation is true with Mary, I definitely feel some type of way about how she handled that. Freddie was extremely sick towards the end of their time together, so he was there for Freddie. I mean, Mary had her own life. I'm not saying Mary wasn't there for Freddie in the end, but Mary had two kids. She had a husband. She had moved on, you know what I mean? I'd rather it be that way than her, you know, try stick around and hold Freddie changes his mind. I mean, yes, Freddie did love her, but not in that way. Maybe at one time he felt that he did, but things changed. And Freddie said himself that no one could replace Mary. This is an actual quote he has said many times about Mary. All my lovers asked me why they couldn't replace Mary, but it's simply impossible. I feel like both Jim and Mary impacted Freddie in a great way, and I don't really have a super strong opinion on either of them. I feel like they were brought into Freddie's life for a reason, and I appreciate them. As long as they made Freddie happy and they enjoyed their time with Freddie. I feel like that's what really matters. So sorry this one's kind of short. I thought about adding a little more to it, but I just kind of wanted to keep it sweet and simple, especially after my last video. Oh, tea. But I really hope you guys enjoyed this. I will post my last little Halloween-related video soon, and I love you guys.